nerd. What a nerd. Nerds. 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 I'm not kissing a nerd. What is a nerd? Nerd. We interrupt this program for an important message from Nerdables. All right, welcome, Nerd Devils. Dead. I'm not going to do that again. No, Let's we, still do that already, again. Yeah, we've already decided that's not... I like the word Nerd de- mm, Dead no, no, no. Okay, so anyways, we're going to be talking two episodes of Walking Dead, and we're going to do it real quick. We're going to try to speed through it. Uh, the first episode was two weeks ago. It was the JSS, the second episode of the season, uh, which takes place while Rick and Sean... Uh, most of our Rickin group is uh, yeah. grabbing a horde of zombies and moving them out of the area, Correct. the immediate area. So when that first episode ended, there was a horn going off, and there's a lot of speculation as to who, how, where, and why. A lot of people thinking like the wolves, or it could have been Ron trying to sabotage mm-hmm. the whole plan that Rick had, and so yeah. So the then the episode started started out with a flashback with um, Eden. Mm-hmm. Um, she's in a car. She's her family's being attacked, and we find out what JSS means, which is just keep is just just survive somehow. I almost said just keep living. Just keep living. <laughs> That's Matthew McConaughey's. <laughs> uh, all right, all right. So you know, we 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 see how Eden gets. We see a little bit of a backstory to her. So yeah, and how she gets to uh, term. Or how she gets to. Uh, You're Alexandria. all over the place. On I this am. One, right? How she gets to Alexandria, right? Um, when she and then the episode catches up, we see um, Carol being, you know, sweet housewife Carol, and she's talking to a couple of the other women about recipes. So whatever. basically, everything is normal, everything's the same, and then all of a sudden, you see well, a wolf who broke into the compound somehow and just basically well, yeah. Carol, Carol's like somebody. cooking or something, and she had told this one woman to stay. Make sure she smokes outside because it's you know unhealthy to do it in the house or whatever. And the girl, you see the girl out there smoking, and the next thing you know, a machete is. <laughs> guy comes in with a machete and just slashes her. At first, I thought, is this just like Carol imagining this because she wants to see this woman die? Well, no, and, and she doesn't. I don't think she has it in for anybody because there's nobody that's really yeah, I know. tested her. You know, so. so so we move on. So all of a sudden, the wolf attack happens, and I mean, it's it takes up the majority of the episode. It basically is the episode. It's uh, you know, with that episode and tonight's episode, it's basically simultaneous uh, action happening. Mm-hmm. And so this is basically the point of view from Carol Alexander. and and Maggie and everybody that's inside the the walls. Mm-hmm. And tonight's episode was everybody who was outside the walls, basically. And I mean, this episode was definitely a. A, um, it was the Alexandria coming out party as far as experiencing what life is outside of the walls. Mm-hmm. You know, this is this is their time. You know, we did see a lot of Alexandrians get slaughtered. Um, but a lot we, of red shirts that we <laughs> we like to say. Yeah, uh, a lot of Star Trek red shirts. Yes, um, but we did see some of them starting to take up arms and defend themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, which I think, you know, uh, a lot of them already kind of knew how to do it, but it wasn't just like... But they realized know. more what what Rick was saying had some validity to right. it. You know, um, and it wasn't just, you know, the psycho waving a gun around like we saw in one of the episodes last season. Mm-hmm. This was, oh, shit, you know, Jesse, for example. You know, when she locks herself in the closet with her son, she realizes, you know what... I can't just sit in here. I've got to go out and defend my home mm-hmm. and protect my kids. Well, she realizes that Ron is still missing, so mm-hmm. she's like, I need to go and find Ron. And so he she said, fucks that guy up. <laughs> well, it, was a, it was one of the female uh, wolves mm-hmm. and, and basically loses her gun uh, through a struggle, and then she basically takes a pair of scissors that she usually cuts hair with and just stabs away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like with Ron away. looking on, and Ron freaks out. Yeah. Um. Which he needs to go anyways, you know. I mean, he did the boy, the poor boy. He's got like major issues already. You yeah. know, he, he saw his dad get killed by the guy that's like got his mom's fancy, and now got his man, mom's fancy, got her fancy. Mm-hmm. And then his girl is going off with Curl. 
Well, she's just going off. <laughs> so, she, she's but he sees her with uh, with Carl, and basically assumes that you know she doesn't like him and she likes Carl better. And, and then Carl comes out and saves his life with an M sixteen. So yeah. Carl looks like a big badass. <laughs> well, you know, Ron's been saved by Rick and Carl twice now, and it's just like you know, fuck you guys, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. Um, we saw Ninja Turtle Morgan. Teenage Mutant Ninja Morgan. Yeah, his, with his bow staff. Yeah. He was basically, you know, on this kick of, I'm not going to kill anybody. Uh, even the guy that he knocks out and basically ties up and guy starts, you know, coming back too. And he keeps telling him, you know, this is not what you have to do anymore. You don't have to be like this. And he's trying to reason with the guy. Mm-hmm. And then essentially, I can't remember if the guy started calling out to somebody or whatnot. Yeah, because so the, the whole group of them. Carol kills him or something like that. Or maybe she just walks up and kills him. Oh, that's right. General. Yeah, yeah, the first guy. Yeah, and so Morgan's just kind of like, I had it covered. You know, we don't have to kill him. But Carol's like, no, we're killing everybody. <laughs> well, we see Rambo Carol that we haven't seen since Terminus. Mm-hmm. Uh, when she <laughs> saved everybody basically at Terminus. Yeah. She does it again here. And she ends up putting on some of the wolves' clothing. Mm-hmm. Disguises uh, herself as a wolf. Instead of a sheep in wolf's clo- or a wolf in sheep's clothing, she was a sheep, sheep in wolf. wolf's clothing. Uh, Got it? Uh huh. No. Which is funny <laughs> because if you think about it, she had been a wolf in sheep's cl- sheep's clothing the whole time she's been in, ter- in uh, yeah. Alexandria. Well, that's why you always see her in a wool sweater. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, see. Didn't. A little bit of an insight that they probably didn't even think of. <laughs> um, so the whole episode, you know, was it's basically a coming of age party. Them fending off the attack. Yeah, and the, that was the entire episode. There. We saw we saw some the situation with Aaron. So we found out what happened to his backpack when mm-hmm. he lost it. Well, he found out what happened to his backpack. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, and like I said, this episode is a lot to do with character development because there's Denise now, who's basically taking on the role as the doctor. Mm-hmm. And her first patient, she basically, which is Holly, who gets stabbed, and she wasn't able to save her. Right. So, well, even um, oh God, what's her name? That's in charge of the place. Um, her son mm-hmm. realized Rick was right. Yeah. yeah, you see it, and he's he's basically the one that took the shot that took out the the tanker truck that was yes. coming by, and basically that's the whole reason for the horn is. The person he killed landed on the horn and just ran into a wall. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, you can tell that he's basically understanding. What's well, because happening. wasn't it who killed the zombie? Who the truck driver that became the zombie? He did. Was it him? Yeah. Or was it the mom? No, it was him. Because oh, remember, that's right. Because he had her sit in the truck. Yeah, afterwards. and she's. You remember she was telling Maggie, she's like, "Oh, well, I would be no good with a gun anyway, so you yeah, it would be better." If I stay here and be safe, you know, just in case after we this blows over, I can still be here to yeah, lead yeah, people. Yeah. Um, so we didn't have Rick, we didn't have Michonne, we didn't have Daryl. It was the first time where like four of the main characters were missing. Uh-huh. Um, I don't, I don't think there's an episode where it's like this at all. To be honest with you, well, but, they had only two really. I mean, of the original group, hmm. there were only two people. In this episode, well, there there's were Carol, like Carol, Maggie, there's Rosita. Oh, but of the Tara, original, of the yeah. original, original group back mm-hmm. at the camp in the first season, there's well, only Carol, and Carol and Carl, Carol and Carl. Yeah. Of course, there's only three of them left from the original group. And there's, there's more. Of them. There's what? Carol, there's Rick, Carl, Rick. There's Rick, Daryl, and Daryl, Glenn, and Glenn. Oh yeah, I forgot about Glenn and Daryl. That's right. They Carol were, and Carl. So I think there's five of them five, still yeah. left over from the first season. Yeah. So, the only ones left in that were in Alexandria to defend it were Carl, Carl and Carol, yeah. and Morgan, and with some help with like Maggie and Rosita and Tara still, yeah, because they knew how to how to basically shoot a gun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, Alexandria is basically undefended. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that I mean that's basically it with that episode. I mean there were, there was, yeah, a, was there was a it, lot. It's a lot of char- I think it was a character building episode. You see, like Denise, Denise now very unsure of her capability as a doctor. Mm-hmm. Um, you see Aaron, who's you know now maybe regretting or feeling bad that he may have been the reason why they got attacked. Yeah, because he lost his backpack with all the pictures and everything. So and then Morgan, who's 
now like being on the fence about killing people or not killing people because he's he's on the complete opposite end of what Rick is at. Right. You know, Rick is like, we don't trust anybody anymore. Just go ahead and kill them. Morgan's like, they can be saved, and we're just gonna, you know, talk it out. Do you think it's gonna come back and bite him? I think this season is gonna make them two balance each other out. Because, I mean, they definitely are the yin and yang right now. Yeah. Because I think that's what it is. It's, you know, Morgan is gonna, you know, bestow some, for lack of a better word, serenity onto Rick. (laughs) You know, he's just Jiminy Cricket. Yeah. Basically give him more of a human side. Whereas Rick is going to, you know, have Morgan understand, you know, hey, you know, there are some times where you're just going to have to kill people. Mm-hmm. You, you can't get And well, I think Morgan kind of realized that at the, towards the end of the episode where he let those guys go. Mm-hmm. And what's the guy do? As soon as he lets him go, he picks up a gun from a dead guy and walks out. Yeah. And now these but guys even, have guns. But even his last, you know, phrase to him is basically, you know, as, as long as you're doing this, you're going to die. Yeah. You know, you need to stop living this kind of life. Yeah. And it's basically trying to make the moral compass for him. And as you see what happens to our moral compasses throughout this show, like, you know, Mm -hmm. Dale and Herschel, (laughs) you can see. Oh, that's true. I forgot. Dale was the, yeah. Yeah. So I have a, I have a feeling that, um, because especially also in the comics, it's kind of going in this direction. Morgan has a very set, um, storyline yeah. there's a very set storyline for morgan and he's he wasn't really around too long once he re- reunites with the group i like lenny james i like his character i'd like to see him more but you never know the way I, I, you think his his character will be wrapped up by the end of the season it's possible just one reason because of the act you know the actor playing mm-hmm. morgan you know well i know like lenny james wasn't able to do a lot in the previous seasons because of all the other commitments right. he had but um, looking at like what he's scheduled to do for, you know, shows and movies and whatnot, he doesn't seem like he's got a lot on his plate. Okay. So there's a good chance that he can be around for a season or two, definitely. But so we moved on to we'll move on to this se- the episode for tonight. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll say that there's a lot of spoilers. Titled, thank you. What? Yeah, which is titled "Thank You." Titled and, "Thank You," and we'll get to know why <laughs> after a little while. I didn't even realize the title was Thank You. Yeah. Um, so this one took place while the Alexandria uh, attack was going on. Um, which, w- there was a couple things. Because to me, most of the shootings, I guess, no, I guess it didn't. It seemed like to me, watching JSS, uh, there was most of the fighting and shooting was taking place while the horn was still going. But in this episode, after the horn dies, it, there's a little bit of a break, and then you hear the gunshots. Well, there's still, yeah, there's still gunshots because it's the group that's inside that are shooting the wolves. Right. So, I mean, um, I don't think throughout the entire episode, I don't think any of the wolves were using any guns. No, the guns so, were strictly yeah. the Alexandrians. So that's why. Um, so I don't think it was like any crossfire. It was just basically right. the Alexandrians laying waste to them. So apparently they they ended up taking the zombie horde a lot farther away than it seemed like they did in the mm-hmm. first episode, because it took them a lot longer to get back, and not to mention half of our group ends up in a town that is halfway back to Alexandria. Right. So well, that's the thing is like you you don't know because once the horde broke off, that second group ran after them so they may be you know they may have ran this way you know, or like i'm like you can see me <laughs> they can ran like out like east, east let's say for west, example yes. and uh, you know another five miles out where you know if they were right where they are that was the halfway point anyway but do you think that the horde would start to break uh, let's say that they are 15 miles away from alexandria or so do you think that the zombie horde would start breaking up before it got there, or do you think that they're just so follow the leaderish that they'll continue on? Because no, the, you know, the yeah. sounds are they're, they obviously follow sound, mm-hmm. and the zombies will make sound. Especially the more you get together, they'll just keep following the ones. But no, aren't they kind of so. like like birds or ants or stuff? That the front ones start to to dis, you know they're no longer following anything; they're leading now. Well, no, because they're still following, like, Daryl and, you know, Sasha and Abraham in the car. 
And I mean, with uh, Daryl's motorcycle being as loud as it is, I mean, they're just following that sound. But the ones that broke off. Well, that's because they heard the the horn. Yeah. So they broke off. Yeah, it's a different sound in a different location. So, you know, some of them noticed that sound and they break off. You can't, you don't know, like, what, what, um, I want to say, like, what stage of um, deterioration Mm -hmm. the rest of the walkers are at. Because some of them may be just, like, they lost their hearing, they lost their sight, or, you know, they're losing the hearing function that they have, and, you know, they barely hear a sound in front of them, and so they just start following that. So, with with a lot of the um, episodes we've had in the past and everything, there's... When one of our main characters is, you know, gets in a situation, there's a lot, and they leave them as a cliffhanger for the episodes. Mm-hmm. You sometimes wonder if they're going to make it out alive or not, mm-hmm. because they really can come off anybody anytime. This episode, two characters got put into that main main characters got put into that situation. Yeah, I did not feel the. Even though one of them was pretty much in dire straits, hmm. I still felt like he's it, it's he's going to get out. He's fine. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, like we said earlier, there there are spoilers in this one, so we're going to let you guys take a second to you know pause it and watch the episode if you wanted to. But uh, hmm. moving on from there, it's uh, basically the group that was with Glenn and Michonne. Um, mm-hmm you know, coming back, gets split up um, because Glenn wants to make a diversion for the horde that's To coming, try to stop the horde from making it to Alexandria. Making, basically making a diversion. And Nicholas being, you know, still remorseful and wanting to prove to Glenn that he's sorry for, you know, almost killing him or trying to kill him earlier or whatever. Well, before um, before you get to that... Wants to come with him. Right. Before you get to that, because there is something that's really important that, ha- that happens before that. Hmm. When Rick, when they first hear the sound, the sound, you know, the sound, Rick decides he's going to go off to get the RV to try to come back for everybody. Yeah, and he sends Glenn and Michonne and everybody else that's from Alexandria that's with them to continue to try to you know keep moving because they got some people that are injured and they're trying to keep them. Rick tells them, "Don't wait around for." Basically just, saying, if somebody's stuck and you know that they're gonna die, just let them live. Yeah. Let them go. You know these people are probably gonna die anyway. And and he does say that. Yeah. He, I mean, he he flat out says that. And Dwight is it Dwight? No. Which no. one? What's uh, his name? Heath. Heath. That's right. Heath hears him say this, mm-hmm. and which leads back to you know at this point everybody's so skeptical of Rick. Anyways. Yeah. He's basically thinking that, you know, Rick doesn't care about the, the Alexandrian group at all. He's right. got his own agenda or something like that. He only want, wants to keep his group safe, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's the feeling that he had. And basically, Michonne shuts do him think, down quick. Do you think that Rick is right? I do. Because, you know, a lot of these people were here from the beginning. Once this all started, they were already in this safe zone. Mm-hmm. So they didn't experience. They don't know what is out there, what's happening. They don't know how to handle all of this. As you can tell, you know, when the wolves broke in, you know, none of those people were prepared to take a gun and, you know, and shoot. Even though they have this great arsenal in there. Yeah. Well, even like um, the the girl that's protecting the armory. Mm-hmm. You know, and She's hiding Carol, in a closet. Carol is basically like, you take this gun, you stand, and you point this gun in this direction. Anybody who comes in that door, you pull the trigger. That was her basically, yep. her quick... You know, tutorial on how to how shoot. to use a gun. Yeah, because she didn't know how to use a gun. <laughs> this week on Carol teaches us to shoot. Yeah, just point and pull the trigger. But yeah, I mean, well, you could tell, like when they they when the group was attacked, the group with Glenn was attacked by zombies, and they originally told him, "Don't use your guns because you're going to draw more here." Mm-hmm. As soon as they started firing guns, you could tell. Right away, because it wasn't like Rick's group when they're headshot, headshot, headshot. Yeah, I think I it's made not like the, playing Call of Duty. Did I make the comment yeah. of like they were standing like right in front of them, and they're like, "Why aren't you shooting them in the head?" I mean, yeah. like you, you, it's like four shots later, then it goes, the walker goes down, and so then you get the one guy who just shoots the other guy in the leg and runs off. <laughs> I was like, 
Okay. Like, he's dead. And, yeah. But, you know, those things are there just to show... To show the, the yeah, ones in the group, yeah. the gr- ones from Alexandria that can defend themselves. Look, you yes, you can defend yourself, but look at the rest of your people. Mm-hmm. They don't know how. They have no business being here. And as Rick said in the first season, first episode, they have no business being alive. Mm-hmm. You know, when Rick's people, Rick has had people that have been defending themselves, they have, you know, had people that were out there in the muck, you know, that died, mm-hmm. that should have lived while these people didn't. Right. Excuse me. Um, so Glenn's group gets all of a sudden, now they get into this derelict town. Mm-hmm. Um, Basically, they split up mm-hmm. so that Daryl, or I'm sorry, uh, Glenn and um, Nicholas can go off and, you know, basically set a feed store on fire because it was the driest place they can think of that would burn up quick and so once they find out that the feed store is already burned up and so they're trying to find a new location to set on fire and they get themselves in a situation where that's a bad because because the horde wasn't as far behind them as they thought right now um i know you want to get to that uh, the one thing but we saw daryl leave um, Sasha and Abraham early on. What was that about? Because it just that didn't really make sense. He was he trying to get back to Alexandria, or I think uh, if I remember correctly, Rick said something to him, and he was like, "Well, I'm going to go help that group." You know, because he, he told Sasha saying, and Abraham, "You've got this. Don't worry about because yeah. they're they're leading the horde away." They're like uh, he was like at this next intersection. I'm going to take this street down. And it's basically the street that, you know, Rick was on. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I'm going to go check it out, essentially. And so I think that's what it was, is he wants to see, you know, what was happening. Because I guess he was hearing something over the the walkie that, you know, know, shit was hitting the fan. So he thought he needed to go help out. Yeah. So then we get get to Glenn and them. Mm -hmm. Which I don't understand with Daryl coming back. He just kind of... See, that was where I was going to get to. Just drives just gonna... up to the car again and is just like, okay, let's finish. What right, we're when doing. there is shit that's going down, yeah. and everybody, and he can hear over the walkie that Rick's in trouble because that's what brings him back from wherever he was going. Yeah. And it almost, to me, it almost felt like Daryl was done. He was leaving, you know, and all of a sudden he heard all of this going on, so it brought him back. Hmm. And he, you see him falling in line with Sasha and Abraham at the end, but. You know, while all this other stuff is going on, where you know you saw from Michonne and she was kind of, mm, she was she was kind of the 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 voice of reasoning for the Alexandrians that were in the group. That well, yeah, I mean, I think Heath was really the only one that had the concern because of what he overheard Rick say. Right, and I guess you know, basically Michonne was telling him. <clears throat> Look, this uh, he may have said that, but he knows what he's talking about. He's been through this, he's done this. Have you have you been through this? No, you haven't. And that's why he knows and that's why he's better than you. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, she, have you have you ever been covered with so much blood on your body that you don't know if it's yours, the walkers, or one of your friends? Yeah. No, you haven't. So you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Basically shuts him up real quick. Yeah. And so You yeah. haven't been out there. <clears throat> so I think that's what you know, then he starts to realize that well, you know, okay, so we got to work together because these guys know something, we know something, and if we put their minds together, we can mm-hmm. we can handle it. Which, you know, they realize they got to leave <laughs> the store that they're in because the horde's there. Yeah. And basically, basically half that group is gone. <laughs> they, they, lost, they quickly <laughs> lost half that group. Yeah. So you had Michonne. Um, you had Michonne, Heath, Heath, and David, the... The girl and the other guy. David was the guy with the shotgun that got bit. They got bit. Yeah. They had the note for Bet Becky for, or Betsy or whatever. For his uh yeah, for his wife. Um which they didn't even take the note. <laughs> yeah. Because he drops it <laughs> as he's getting chomped on. Because they were overrun big time. Yeah. And then you had Glenn and Nicholas mm-hmm. Nicholas together. They were also overrun, essentially. It's basically the horde caught up to them. Mm-hmm. And so they were already split up. And so in two different areas, this horde has basically surrounded them. Yeah. So like with Michonne and her group, 
they were stuck against a fence and basically a bunch of them were able to get over the fence and basically David was the only one that got left behind because he got dragged back down. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, so then they move on, move forward. Uh, with Rick and Nicholas, they get back into a corner again. Glenn. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Glenn and uh, Nicholas, they get backed into a corner and basically have, like, a dumpster to stand on, I guess, to mm-hmm. try to, you know, <laughs> not Which get I'm bit. surprised they didn't get inside. That's what, that's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, why don't you just get inside and then wait it out? <laughs> if they got inside and just sat in there quiet for long enough, yeah. they'd probably eventually... I would think so, you know, like, but... Or at least he had a radio, so he could have called Rick and gave, you know, a location. Like, hey, we're in a dumpster in so-and-so yeah. place, yeah, but... Uh, so essentially they're on top of the dumpster and they're out of bullets, essentially, I would say. No, they're not out of bullets. I would say Glenn is out of bullets because he was starting to use his knife. Yeah, I think Glenn was out of bullets because obviously Mm -hmm. Nicholas wasn't out of bullets. And, uh... Nicholas loses it. Yeah, basically. I think throughout the whole episode you see Nicholas is kind of... Not the whole season you've seen this. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, you see... That he's reliving, you know, past runs and things like that. He had to kill a walker that was someone in his group before. That he left. Yeah, that yeah. they left behind. And so, you know, I think all of that emotion was basically catching up to him and he couldn't handle it anymore. So he basically turns to Glenn and says, thank you, <laughs> and shoots himself in the head. And basically falls on top of Glenn, which ultimately has Glenn fall off the dumpster into the middle of this horde. Mm-hmm. And so the way that they shot it is that you see Glenn getting picked at with these walkers and all these guts coming out of him. And basically you don't see anything more and of Glenn. And Glenn's kind of screaming. And... Yeah. So it's made to believe that It Glenn, looks like Glenn, Glenn is, is gone. Getting, you know, is it, now, let me ask you. Is it because you know the book? That you don't feel it? No, but I just don't think that they would take Glenn out like that. Because I think to me, think, as I'm thinking about it as you're saying because, it, I think it's because I know how it ha- what happens in the book. No, because I think with Glenn's heroic nature, if he went out, it would have to be... In a blaze of glory? Basically, he would be protecting somebody else. Or if it wasn't the way that it is in the book, it's because he's like protecting someone else. I mean, because obviously, I mean, obviously they've changed things and characters, things that have happened to certain characters in the book have happened to other characters in the show right. and vice versa. Um, but that is such the, the thing that we're not, we're alluding to that happens in the book is such a big mm-hmm. thing that I don't see him you doing it with any other character. Well, I guess there's one other character they could do it with. They could do it with Daryl, and that I mean, yeah, they that that could be if they want to go with that shock factor they, of it. That would but, be the only way to do the shock factor mm-hmm. bigger than what it was in the book. Yeah, but then you'd have half your viewers stop watching because they <laughs> killed Daryl or Riot. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, you know, and there's even possibility that they decide to do it that with, like, a character like Morgan. Mm-hmm. When like, when you saw Rick get his hand cut on the uh, mm-hmm. on the zombie blade, mm-hmm. uh, did it make you think, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> You're going to cut the hand off. <laughs> no, but it's like uh, the whole time when, like, I saw the machete stuck in the shoulder and I was like, you know what? He's probably going to get cut because that thing's sticking out pretty far. <laughs> And so, sure enough, he puts his hand up on the chest of the walker, slices his hand open um, as he's cutting, uh, as he's, you know, hacking away at him. And but so he's losing, a... he's losing a lot of blood. So it's well, just But kinda... they also, he may end up losing usage of that hand for a little while, which mm-hmm. would be a good homage to the book. Yeah, I can see that. You know, if you have it where he can't use his hand because he has to do other things, it's almost like having him lose his hand. But then, you know, because you remember... There was one point before when he got his hand broken or something earlier on. Well, it's when he had the fight with Tyrese and he basically punched him to a pulp in yeah. prison. And so, yeah, they had to wrap the hand for a while. Yeah, and he couldn't use it. So there's, there's this little mm-hmm. tidbit. But here's the thing is I think it was his left hand that he cut. Yes, it but was his left yeah. hand. He, in the comic, right. he loses the right arm. Right. So because he's right-handed. Yes. And that's what was making it so difficult for and in, Robert when, Kirkman to write stuff for well, And when he, he had the whole fight with Tyrese and mm. had his hand wrapped, it was the right hand. 
Yeah, so... Yeah, I think they... I mean, it's it could be that way, or it just could be something to show that he's vulnerable now because he doesn't have full use of both arms. And, and it, well, yeah, he's vulnerable. But you can see and... that he was fully capable of taking out, taking out two guys. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that, uh, that storm him in the RV, so... Well, he t- technically, he took out five because he shot well, them through the guys, wall. Yeah, but he just shot them through the wall. Like, this, these guys... I didn't even one... see the AK. I didn't even notice that. I thought it was maybe just something that was already in the RV, because I think the other guy just came in with a handgun. I That's what I thought. With the AK. <clears throat> and the first guy comes. Well, maybe it's the first guy because he he did fire like five or six shots really quick. But he came in with a pistol because I saw. It? Yeah, you see him come in. Maybe the second guy had it on him. The the AK on him. But yeah. As he kills him. I don't know. Um. So Rick Rick is in his trouble. Rick is also backed into a corner at this point. <laughs> So I think a lot of, you know, what they're deciding to do with leaving you on cliffhangers is there's a lot of zombies around. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, a lot of these people are out in the open with a bunch of zombies that, you know, they're by themselves, essentially. So now we've kind of recapped everything. Um, Going into a little bit more of the details of the show. um, Do you like the way this season's going? So far, yeah. I I mean, it's... Alexandria... Can be pretty boring. Mm-hmm. The storylines can be pretty. Well, boring. we even said like the comic book is gonna have had this so much filler mm-hmm. between what happens when they got to Alexandria to basically the all-out war storyline. Right, and there was a lot of stuff that you, you could do in a comic book, mm-hmm. but not necessarily be entertaining in a show. Right. So, and then you can take those moments and you can expand them. You know, with a show. I think that's what they're doing with this, is they're expanding the horde Mm -hmm. into the point where it's going to get into that story of the horde getting into Alexander. I'm telling you, for what it seems like, Mm -hmm. the mid-season finale... I still don't think it's... um, Carl's going to lose an eye. I really don't think. I don't know. I mean, because once that horde gets there... Yeah, but, I mean, just thinking of it from a production standpoint... There's got to be a, you know, the actor's got to be there another hour to two hours in makeup every morning to put on the makeup and to take Just it off. when you're going to show it, because you put a bandage but over it, you're fine. But they still have to, they still, even when they put the bandage, they have to put around the bandage, they still got to put makeup. I, but you know. his hair's long enough to cover the side of his head. I don't, I, I mean, as long as, as much as people want to see it, I just don't see it from a production standpoint. I, I, I think it's going to happen. It's They've got more money now. They can do it. It's not about the money. It's just it's too much effort for I don't them to know. do it. Because, uh, I mean, like, I, I think I was listening to someone else that made a good point. They cut off Herschel's leg. He Well, here's, here's the thing. Like, what I was listening to another uh, person discussing it is that they only maim somebody mm-hmm. when they're about to die. With That's the, true. With the exception of Herschel. Mm-hmm. Herschel was the only person that they cut off a leg, and he lasted another season. Well, usually, so. usually, and you know, I said this back with Beth. You know, when if you cut somebody's face, mm-hmm. really deep cut, or something happens to the face, they're not going to last long because that's something the the continuity with that. You've always got to make sure that you get the you know the scar or whatever in the same place, yeah. and. It's just, you know, facial, you know, then, then you got to worry about it healing over and, you know, the scar being there forever. It, it's one of those things, once they, something happens to their face, mm-hmm. then it, they're pretty much done. Or like Tyrese, they cut off his arm the same episode he was dying. Yeah. Bob got his leg cut off the episode he was dying. Yeah. And, you know, these people who get maimed are essentially people that are dying. Right. I don't see them uh, with Carl. I think it could be done though because it, it probably could be done. It's just because it's it's do they basically want to spend the time and the effort to do it. It's it's not an arm, so you don't lose that. I can't lift you. Know, okay, now we just got to all of a sudden do everything with the left hand, you know, or just the right hand. It's it's the eye. Yeah, granted that's serious, but it's a bandage over the eye. Then it becomes an eye patch. You know, if they do it like the book, then there is going to be a. It's going to be a little tricky because, in the book, it's like half his head. The and then the other reason I think that they're going to do it is for Denise, because Denise has to save him, because she does it in the book. You know, she has so. 
They've already established also, her Denise now. Denise is being and Denise in the book is a lot different than Denise in the. TV oh yeah, show. she's much more. Denise capable. was an actual surgeon in mm-hmm. the book, whereas you know this this character is not. And I think they just did that to add the factor of well, they lost Pete, who was the only surgeon, and so it's more right. drama. But I, didn't, I really don't think I really don't think so. From a technical standpoint, what do you think of this season so far? What do you mean? Like from a filmmaking perspective. It's fine. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean like, okay. what do you, I mean, because I mean, there, there's a lot, there, there's definitely a lot more money in the show. You can yeah. tell. I made uh, the comment that they're using helicopter uh-huh. shots now, so they have a lot more money. The I mean, the zombies, they've added an the extra three or four hundred extras. Well, I think they have. They were saying that this horde is like a thousand extras, and mm-hmm. the rest are CGI. So they have like a thousand people that are actual real people dressed up in zombie makeup, but the rest of them are all CGI to make it more. Yeah. So, any, anything else you want to add before? No, it's uh, it's I'm I'm enjoying this season so far. If you if you can put this season in a it, put the seasons in a list of uh, how I enjoy them. Yeah, one through six. Where would you put this one? I so still far. think season one is still one of my favorites because it's still that first episode is one of my favorite episodes mm-hmm. in the entire series. That that shot of Rick on the horse walking into or like galloping in, or like slowly walking into Atlanta. Yeah, one of my favorite shots in the entire series. I haven't found anything else that I like better than that. The door, which is reminiscent, uh, rep- mm. rem- reminiscent of the comic book, is great. Yeah. Uh, um, so I would have him and Glenn's that interaction, the tank and everything was yeah. great. Which was a nice nod today, is because when he's in the tank, he calls Rick a dumbass, mm-hmm. and, and same here as when he's in the RV, he's like, uh, "Okay, dumbass," or yeah. something like that. So it was a nice little throwback to season one, which is nice. Um, but yeah, I'd say season one would be first. Um, I want to say. Season four? Terminus? No, the first half with the prison. Um, all the way leading up to the governor. Basically That's three, isn't in. it? No, three, they made it through the prison completely. Uh, four, I think, it went to the halfway point where the governor basically lost it and they had the attack on the prison. I thought three, the second half of the three showed the governor with the uh, fish tanks. Yeah, probably, but... Are you talking know. when the governor completely lost it and shows up with a tank? Basically, yeah. So you're liking all the, all the seasons that have tanks in them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, one, I would say one, four, uh, five, six, three, two. Interesting. So, three was just kind of because everything was just... It was the I don't same think, as two. Is they stayed in that location I don't for think, so long. Well, the good the thing, the thing that they learned from two to three was they were able to break up. That was when three was when they first started breaking up the series into multiple locations happen, things happening at the same time. Mm-hmm. You know, you had stuff going on in the prison, and you had stuff going on in Woodbury at the exact same time. Yeah. So you could jump between the two, and you know, then you could go back and tell. You know what was happening to Rick while Andrea and Michonne were in Woodbury, and vice versa, mm-hmm. which obviously they're doing a lot of now. Mm. Um, I don't think anyone would actually put se- season two any higher than last. Yeah, no, th- season two. I mean, the greatest it's... moment of season two was Sonia coming out of the pres- or out of the barn. Sonia, or uh, not Sonia. <laughs> So it's been so long. I'm so tired. We're recording way Sophia. too late. Sophia, we're recording way too late now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, well, I think my favorite moment <laughs> from two was with... Sonia. Really? <laughs> uh, my favorite scene from season two is just the last episode. Is a bit when the horde takes the over the whole the whole thing between Shane and Rick, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, basically the burning of the barn and the the horde and all that. Because I thought the the dynamic between Rick and Shane was so great that you know it was basically the 
the final, <laughs> like, it was basically the final part of the arc the, yeah. between their two characters. And so I like their characters a lot. And Is there like, anything that you know from the book that takes place between where we are in season six and where we could end up in season six? Is there anything that you'd like to see not happen from the book? To be honest with you, it's been so long <laughs> since I've read those parts of the book. I mean, it's... Because they've already confirmed a couple people from the book that puts us closer to All Out War mm-hmm. that they've well, we cast knew, we already. Knew, we knew that it was an inevitable Jesus is going to be uh, showing up in this season. That, and that's mainly the person I'm talking about, yeah. is Jesus is going to be showing up. and Paul he, Monroe. Which yeah. Is, just funny because his last name is Monroe, so I don't know if they're going to change that because uh, Deanna's last name is Monroe as well. Right. So, I don't know. Is his name Paul Monroe? I don't remember now. I don't remember, but yeah. Um, could be. I'm telling you, though. The, and we're going we're gonna to wrap it up on this. And I'm just, I'm, re- I'm willing to make you a bet. And if anyone is listening to this and they are reading the book as well, if they could come, what do they think is the mid-season finale? I'm willing to bet you ten dollars that it is Carl. Nothing. There's a, so if, if if you want to leave us a comment and tell us what you think of is the mid-season finale, um, it'd be interesting to see what other people think. Mm-hmm. So next week we have a ninety-minute episode. Looks so looks like it's going to be the backstory of looks Morgan. Like we're getting Morgan's backstory, so we can see what he's been doing since Rick and Michonne and Carl visited him last. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we'll nice. find out Rick and and Glenn's fates. Mm-hmm. Um, they seem pretty uh, straightforward. Well, I Glenn's mean, yeah. more so than Rick. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can't tell by like the way they were shooting Glenn's for sure. So I think he's more of the cliffhanger. But to me, it's like Rick can just shut the door of the RV and hang out there for a little bit. Well, he can also just open the driver's side door and run. Well, the RV doesn't have doors in the, on the seats in front. It only yeah, has they do. I've never seen an RV that has doors. Yes, they do. I've never seen Dale's it. Dale's did. No, it didn't. Go back and look at it. You go back and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> so on that note, Ethan and I are going to wrap it up. Make sure you t- tune in next week when we will be hitting... Episode four. What's do you know its title? Not yet. No. I'm, I'm sure if we look it up on IBM, IMDb, so you're, probably you're welcome. You know, <laughs> thank you, then you're welcome. Yeah, or bless you, or, or something like Nick, that. Nick, you're an asshole <laughs> for dying on top of me. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also make sure you turn into our Nerdables episodes. Uh, we just did 108, and uh, next weekend will probably be our Kamikaze wrap up. I think a few of us are going to Kamikaze, so Mm. we'll uh, see what goes on there. So for Ethan and I, we're saying see you dead in a week. See you next dead, or see you next week dead. Week dead. There's got to be something there. I'm going to find it. Just stop. I will find it.